Hello, boys and ghouls, maniacs, macabre, freaks of the fright. It's your hearty and humble host of horror, the horror heathen for the horror heathen YouTube channel and the South Jersey Horror Podcast. Today in this episode, I have a very special and honored guest. I'm I'm stoked because I've been trying to get you for a while now. <laughs> I have Miss Stacy Nelkin, um, born in September 1959. You're 61 years old, and you look fantastic. By the way, I'm, I'm older than that, but let's leave it at 61. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Ben. And you got me, honey. <laughs> so you look way. fantastic for your, you look amazing going. for your I, age. So. I like that I'm already younger. So good. <laughs> so starting your role as as the character of Bonnie Sue Chisholm in the CBS Western miniseries, The Chisholms back in 1979. Your role was later replaced by Delta Burke, boo, in 1980. <laughs> well, if I may, may can I interject right now? Yeah. I know on the internet, it makes it look like I got fired. They actually offered me that job to to do it as it went to series. It was a mini series. And um, I didn't want to. I didn't want to be stuck in that role um, on TV. Um, I was already doing a lot of films and things. And so I turned it down and then Delta Burr took over. So that's what happened. Mm, that's, that's, that that breaks yeah. my heart. <laughs> Yeah, you, um, you were scheduled to be in Blade Runner, but being part of the six Nexus, Nexus Six replicant that escapes from the foreign planet and travels to Earth, but due to budget constraints, it resulted in the role being cut from the film, which also breaks my heart because you should be in that movie. What's no <laughs> hands down, no discussion, just be in the movie. <laughs> yeah, that broke my heart too. Let me tell you, we I did the the costuming, the you know wardrobing, the makeup, the hair, the whole thing hung out on the set for weeks and was part of it. So it was nice that Ridley Scott had me, at least when they had the 25 year, you know, uh, anniversary of it. He included me because I felt like I was part of it. But yeah, you know, those are very unlucky breaks. And I've had lots of them, <laughs> but that's what happens. It's life. I've had many lucky breaks too, you know, so... And you made appearances in my favorite TV shows of the 80s. Chips, The A-Team, Hunter. <laughs> it's just fantastic. It's your resume, it gets better and better. I love it. So <laughs> now, you are, now you're a relationship expert. You have your own yep. YouTube channel and website supporting your new career. Congratulations. Uh, furthermore, you also began your career as a drama therapist. And you're a substance abuse certified and professional Certified alcohol and substance abuse counselor. Right. So and... I would like to correct that. I am not a drama therapist because I did not go to grad school uh, for that. And you need grad school and college and all that. But I am a trained substance abuse counselor and I've been doing that full time. Uh, I've been doing that for seven years now. So I, almost seven years. Thank yeah. you. It's, it's a big Sorry, ordeal to a lot of people. It. It's a really big ordeal. And it I've, is a big ordeal and bigger and bigger as time goes on, right? And so now you started the movie Forest Hills, uh, directed by Scott Goldberg, which I just spoke to on the phone like a few minutes ago. He's a really <laughs> nice guy. And, Very sweet, yeah. And you worked alongside Shelley Duvall and Edward Furlong. And <laughs> I had one scene, so I wish I could say I starred in it. I just had one little scene, and I didn't get to work with either of them, actually. So, oh um, yeah, it would have been fun. I'm proud of him for getting that going, though. Yeah, it's a fun script. It's a good script and should it's, be a good film. That's what he told me on the phone. I mean, he and I, we talk back and forth a lot. So, oh, cool. I, I, I'm trying my hardest to get Shelly Duvall cool. on my show, but I'm not expecting it to happen. So, okay. <laughs> but he's, he's, he said he's going to ask her for me, which I really do appreciate. So, yeah, nice. Um, so we could hop into Halloween three, one of okay. my favorite cult classic movies of all time. I don't know why it gets so much crap, but I love the movie, and a lot of people are disappointed with it. I don't know why. I mean, I guess they don't have an open mind like the rest of us do. So, <laughs> but the the role of Ellie Greenbridge, um, were you handpicked for that, or did you have to audition for that role? Um. A couple of things. So first of all, um, 
the way it happened was it happened actually pretty quickly. Uh, I was very close with um, the man who was the makeup artist, a man named Ron, um, Ron Walters. Ron and I met when we did The Last Convertible. That's also where I met my first major love, Perry King. We fell in love. Perry left his wife. He moved in with Ron when he was thrown out of his apartment, his house with his wife. Um, and Ron had already been cast. So we met during The Last Convertible. Ron was already hired to be the makeup artist on Halloween 3. And so Ron kept talking to me about the role of Ellie and it's a great part and you'd be great in it and they can't find anybody. And this would go on for, this went on for at least a month or so and I wasn't interested. Um, and then he finally talked me into at least reading the script and I was with CAA at the time and they sent the script right over and I loved the character. So I got in to read like a day or two later because they were scheduled to film like at the end of this now, this week um, that, that I'm talking about. And uh, so I went in to read and literally as I read with Tom Atkins and uh, as I was walking in my door on my way home from the, the audition, the phone was ringing. This is way before cell phones. <laughs> phone was ringing. I pick it up and it was my agent saying, they love you. They want you to do it. And you got to get out to, up to Eureka. Uh, it was something like in two days. <laughs> and the next day I had to do makeup, go over to Don Post studio. It was like whirlwind. So um, I also want to get back to something you said. Um, I think right now, um, as of the 40th anniversary of it, it's kind of scary. It has actually found a huge following. Um, Tom and I and Tommy Lee, the director, we do, um, and writer, we do, um, we do a lot of conventions. And it's so interesting because I've been doing these, these Halloween conventions for 20 something years now. And, you know, in the beginning, people would say what you said, Ben, you know, eh, a lot of people really don't like it, but I love it. And people would very sheepishly come up to me, you know, this is actually my favorite. Today, people <laughs> come up and really very unabashedly <laughs> say, it's my favorite of all the films. I've shown it to my kids. Last one we did in Burbank, I've had ki the kids of people who love it coming up and saying, I grew up watching this movie when I was a kid. I don't know why their parents showed it to them when they were a kid, but because I wouldn't let my kids see it, but they love it. So like we get all these now like teens and 20 somethings who love the movie. So they didn't even know that it was kind of the, um, the bastard of the family. Right. Uh, so it's really kind of nice to see the, the transformation over the decades. I, I get it because I talked to uh, Ryan Lambert yesterday, who started the movie The Monster Squad that came out okay. in nineteen eighty seven, and yeah. it, it it's it's the exact same result. Forty years later, people are yeah. flocking to conventions you know, to just just to, to, to their Q and A panels. Right, and, it's and, wild. Yeah, and it's 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 what people don't realize is movies made in the eighties were the catalyst of all what, what's being made now. Right, it's it all being stemmed from these other movies. And it's fantastic. Yeah. And, and I, yeah. I love talking to old school actors because that back then it was when the real makeup was done, the cheesy special effects, which I've been, I love so much. <laughs> so, <laughs> Well, you know, you're bringing up a great point. You know, uh, my favorite scene in the movie to shoot, because I thought it was so cool how they did it. This is way before green screen and all that. The scene where my, my head comes off and I'm lying on the ground looking at my head <laughs> over there, right? And so what Tommy Lee had, and the, the, the set designers had done, they, they built this platform that was wide enough for a body to get under, and then they had a hole in it. And so I stuck my head up like a little whack-a-mole <laughs> and it was covered with grass and dirt and whatever. And then they had my body double three feet away with her head down a hole 
um, wearing, you know, face down, wearing the exact outfit I'd been doing. And there I am looking over and I swear it was so surreal because it looked exactly like my body. I mean, she was wearing the same outfit I was wearing for the last two weeks of shooting every day. And so, cause every time I'd look down there it was, and there it was over there. It was very trippy, but you know, today they would do all kinds of fake stuff. You know, in the old days they had to use their imagination a little more. Yeah. I so, love practical special effects and makeup. It's, yeah. it's all CGI and green screen. Now it doesn't seem, it doesn't have that, that, that same, that same feel to it, you know? Right. Right. And I Agreed. watched, I watched one, uh, one movie last week and I, and I was like, this is the crappiest CGI I've ever <laughs> seen in my life. Oh my God. So, so I, I, would have, I need to know after reading the script and you recall Dan, whether, mm -hmm. um, what was your initial reaction? Like, what the hell am I getting myself into? Or like, like <laughs> you're excited to do it. Um, you know, there was actually none. I, I go by the character. If I really love a character, I feel like I can contribute something. Um, as I said, I was not really into horror films, which was part of the reason, um, I didn't want to do it. I don't like watching horror movies. I myself was traumatized when I was 13, going to see The Exorcist, when it first came out on the giant screen. And I literally, I couldn't sleep for three weeks. I was having constant nightmares. So, um, you know, I had a pretty messed up childhood. And so it, it was just too much for me. I was scared enough. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't need movies to make me more scared. And I like comedies. I want to feel good. I don't want to feel scared. Um, and so, um, so that was kind of my reason why I didn't even want to audition for it. And then when we did it and it didn't really do very well, um, it did okay, but you know, it kind of came and went. It was not one of the movies that I actually even ever talked about because it was like, oh yeah, Halloween three and, and then Yellowbeard and then, you know, I'd be happy to talk about these others. And now this is what I'm known for, <laughs> which is kind of, trippy and surreal and um you know karma i see i should have been nicer to halloween three maybe decades ago <laughs> <laughs> but actually good karma so well i love you and your role on it so you're a fantastic actress you're phenomenal and my wife has, has watched you in um the chisholms by the way and mm. yes yeah, she loved you in that right. she's she's, she's oh. much older than i am but <laughs> good you like older women Good for yes, you. She is nine years older than me. So okay. Um, for you working alongside working alongside Tom Atkins, what was that like? I mean, was he a cool guy to work with? Or he's like one of those guys, like Urgh. no, he was great. He, you know, he has he he has that vibe sometimes that he can turn on of that kind of curmudgeonly, you know, like you went, you know, that he is so sweet. And so funny, um, and he was so um, he was so gracious when we worked together. Because I think the the love scene was one of the first scenes we did, which is always terribly uncomfortable, no matter what. Um, but he, you know, he was a total gentleman. Made me feel comfortable. He had worked with Tommy Lee before. He he knew some of the crew people. He was just great. He was, um, he was just a, a really good guy. And I know him better now because I get to see him more now at these conventions than, you know, even, you know, on the set with him. So. That's awesome. Cause he, he, like I said, he puts out that vibe. Like I know a lot of people idolize him now because of what he did in the movies. So. <laughs> he gets people lining up, especially men. Men, you know, he's their idol. Like he was the cool guy. And so these these particularly males, you know, will line up for, you know, hours to talk to him. And he's so great with every one of them. He really is. Okay, so this is probably a question you get asked a lot. And rumor has it you'd never seen the first two Halloween movies until you watched, but you had to go back and watch the first two Halloween movies before 
the Halloween three, so you knew what was going on. Did you find that was completely irrelevant <laughs> to the other ones? Um, I I did not see them until I maybe when maybe when Ron was bringing it up. Maybe at that point, I saw Halloween one, um, and then two. Uh, I knew ours was a total departure. If ours was like one and two, I probably wouldn't have done it, in all honesty. I like ours better only because those movies remind me of kind of, um, I hate to say this, um, what's the name of that guy who used to do all of those kind of scary, crazy horror movies in the late 70s? He died lately. He had like a whole conglomerate going. What is his name? Um you know who I'm talking about? I do not. <laughs> okay, it'll come to me. It'll come to me. But anyway, um, ah, I'm blanking on this guy's name. But they were like kind of, sh- I hate to say schlocky, tits and ass, gratuitous nudity, <laughs> you know, and, and those kind of things. It's like I, I didn't want to be part of that. And so I was very pleased when I read the script that it was nothing like that, that the character... I found some way to inject some humor in her into Ellie and, you know, it was a little more sci-fi like. So to me, it makes you think a little more. It's got a little more of a message rather than just gratuitous, you know, tits and ass and blood. (laughs) So, which I don't like. Um, This guy's name will come to me. It'll come to me. Yeah, I remember the first He did all the movies in the 70s. all those like horror movies and tits and ass movies and you're not you don't know who i'm talking about um no, it'll not. come sorry to me. it'll come to me i'm sorry no, no it's okay i, I, I believe that sometimes <laughs> too people are like who is that one guy i'm like uh yeah but it reminded me of that it was just like of that those two were like that um i'm not even gonna get into because i haven't seen any of the others nor will i um you know, the, the repeats with Mike Myers and, you know, it's not my thing. I, mean, I get it. Everyone, it everyone works has for bag. a lot of people. Yeah. Works for a lot of people. So besides your head popping on the ground like a gopher and your stun double having her head down in the ground, are there any other behind the scenes secrets you could tell the audience? Oh, wow. Well, you know, the love scene stands out only because it was so uncomfortable and I'd never done one before a nude thing. And in fact, you know, because I was with creative artists agency at the time, you know, and they have a lot of pull and they knew what to say. And so um, they had um, drawn up what we call a no nipple clause. So you could show my breast, but not my nipple. (laughs) And Tommy Lee, you know, went right right along with that and tom was great tom atkins and so you know when you're shooting something like that and it's an supposedly an intimate scene and yet there are these you know obstacles and parameters by which you have to you know uh, you have to, you have to obey by, you know, abide by them, like the no nipple. So it was like, well, kiss her like a, a quarter of an inch to the left, Tom. And now like go down just like a half an inch. <laughs> so it made it a little, um, almost comical, but we did not laugh, <laughs> but, but, you know, it was, uh, that was a little awkward and a little whatever, but you know, you do your best. But Tom so. Mag's like, shut up, don't tell me what to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I also remember it was a freezing cold morning and the makeup artist insisted, you know, she wanted to do, had to do full body makeup. This is, you know, today they have these sprayers like they do for fake tans. Mm-hmm. They'll just spray you down. In those days, they would take a not warm, not hot, but a cool or cold sponge and dunk it in with the makeup and like put it all over you. So it was just torturous because it was so long. It took hour and a half of being, you know, immersed in this cold water (laughs) and the makeup would come on cold and it was already so cold in the morning and you couldn't really put a robe on because then it would take the makeup off. And, you know, so it was, uh, it was, um, 
memorable to me. <laughs> Something the audience never sees those kind of things, you know. I, I can totally relate because I worked as a haunter at um, this place called Valley of Fear, and it's only open during um, like September and October, and it gets cold during that those months here in, in New Jersey. So yeah, and they're dabbing fake blood on me. I'm like, oh my god, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up! <laughs> right, right. It's it's freezing, right? Yeah, especially if you have to show your skin, right? Yeah, and it's. I was like, oh my god, could you just not put blood on me this time? Because I don't want it. <laughs> right, right. So you're also a successful author. Um, you have a book called "You Can't Afford to Break Up: How an Empty Wallet and a Dirty Mind Can Save Your Relationship." That right there just sums up my my marriage. <laughs> <laughs> just the title, uh, because my wallet is always empty, but yet our marriage is perfect. So that's great. Yeah, good for you. That's great. Um, you know, I wrote this. Uh, I had a a, a ghostwriter who really helped me. He wrote it mostly. I did some of it. Um, I you know we would talk about the ideas and things it was it was at a time when you know there was a big economic downturn 2007 2008 things were kind of a little scary there as they are now um maybe worse now but um yeah you know i think it's important that you keep everything open and honest and you deal with and you joke about the fact that your wallet's empty and you know, those kind of things, because it can add a lot of pressure to a marriage. Marriage is tough, as you know. It can be stressful. Um, it's the best or the worst. <laughs> and, you know, financial issues can make more stress. And, you know, when we're already stressed and then we're in a marriage, you know, that can be one of the biggest things people fight about. It's true. Yeah. But next week we're celebrating our 12th anniversary. So, oh, happy anniversary! Yeah, That's great. Yeah. She, my wife, awesome. is the perfect woman for me. She keeps me in balance. She keeps my head level, and right. she's she's right. perfect. I mean, I'm I'm so glad that I met her. So awesome, awesome. I'm sure, she feels the same. Unfortunately, she's in Seattle right now, but I I'm, I'm gonna go see her next okay. week. So <laughs> <Good>. okay. <laughs> um. So you're in a movie, Forest Hills. Um. And I talked to Scott Goldberg. Is you said you you didn't uh, didn't appear much in that one, and I'm so sorry. I wish you were more scenes. So I, I really can't ask you anything about the movie. So <laughs> yeah, I um I just did one scene. I play a caseworker for the lead character. Um yeah, but I think it should be good. He's got a good cast, and it was a really good script. So let's hope for the best, right? Okay, so um, yeah, I gotta wrap this up. So I have one small favor to ask for you. Okay, um, my, I have a friend who is obsessed with Halloween three. She's a Halloween three junkie, and her and hers would just celebrated the, their third anniversary last week. I was wondering if you can give a shout out to my friend Tara because she absolutely loves you. Oh, Tara, God bless you, and happy anniversary coming up, and. Uh... You know, we love having fans like you. That's what's kept this all going. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate that. So, ladies and gentlemen, the wonderful, the beautiful, the talented, the very awesome Stacey Nelkin, thank you so much for joining me today. It's been an absolute pleasure. And I feel honored and that I actually got, I finally got to talk to you. So, <laughs> Great. Um, the, ple the pleasure's been mine too, Ben. Thank you. And I wish you the best in your career. And that you, I'm going to start blowing phones up. I swear you need, a, you, need you, you deserve a reward for Ellie Grimbridge. God damn it. I'm going to make sure it happens. <laughs> Be well and happy 12th anniversary. Thank you so much. And have a Thank wonderful day. You too. Take good care. Yeah. Be well. Happy, happy Halloween. Time kids, the clock is ticking. Be in front of your TV sets for the horathon and remember the big giveaway at nine. Don't miss it and don't forget to.